In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. May the peace of Jesus be with all of us. My brothers and sisters, we continue the reading of the Bible. We are still in the book of Genesis. We are now on chapter 38. It's about Judah and Tamar. Brothers and sisters, the Bible is not a book as others. It's a divine book. Hallelujah. Because it's the word of God. Hallelujah to us, to the humanity. That is why I say we have to take our time to meditate about what we are reading. May God bless us, my dear friends. With you, I am Marie Louise Umu Malarongo. About that time, Judah left this, his brothers and went to stay with a man named Hera, who was from the town of Adoram. The Judah met a young Canaanite woman whose father was named Shua. He married her and she bore her, him a son whom he named Er. She became pregnant again and bore another son and, na uh, and named him Onan. Again, she had the son and named him Shela. Judah was at uh, a sheep when the boy was born. For his first son, Er, Judah got a wife whose name was Tamar. Eri's conduct was evil and it displeased the Lord, so the Lord killed him. Then Judah said to Eri's er, brother Onan, Go and sleep with your brother's widow. Fulfill your obligation to her as her husband's brother so that your brother may have descendants. But Onan knew that the children would not belong to him, so whenever he had intercourse with his brother's widow, he laid the semen spear on the ground, so he let the semen spear on the ground, so that there would be no child, no children for his brother. What he did displeased the Lord, and the Lord killed him also. Then Judah said to his daughters in law, Tamar, return to your father's house and remain a widow until my son Shelah grows up. He said this because he was afraid that Shera would be killed as his brothers had been. So Tamar went back home. After some time, Judah's wife died. When he had finished the time of mourning, he and his friend Hira and Adulam went to Timnah 
where his sheep were being shared. Someone told Tamar that her father in law was going to Timna to share his sheep. So she changed from the widow's clothes she had been wearing, covered her face with a veil, and sat down at the entrance to a town, a town on the road to Timna. As she were new, Jedi's, uh, as she were new, Jedi, her youngest son, Shela, had now grown up, and yet she had not been given to him in marriage. When Judah saw her, he brought that she was a prostitute. She thought that she was a prostitute, a prostitute because he had her, her face covered. He went over to her at the side of the road and said, All right, how much do you ch charge? He did not know that she was his daughter in law. She said, What will you give me? He answered, I will send you a young goat from my flock. She said, All right. If you will give me something to keep as a pledge until you send it, you send the goat. What shall I give you as a pledge? He said. He asked. She answered, Your seal with its cord and the stick you are carrying. He gave them to her. Then they had intercourse and she became pregnant. Tamar went home, took off her veil, and put her widow's clothes back on. Judah sent his friend Hira to take the goats and get back from the woman the article he had praised, but Hira could not find her. He asked some men at Enaim, where is the prostitute who was here by the road? There has never been a prostitute here, they answered. He returned to Judah and said, I couldn't find her. The men of the place said that there had never been a prostitute there. Judah said, let her keep the things. We don't want people to laugh at us. I did try to pay her, but you couldn't find her. About three months later, someone said to Judah, your daughter in law Tamar has been acting like a whore, and now she's pregnant. Judah ordered, Take her out and burn to her uh, and burn her to death. As she was being taken out, she sent word to her father in law. I'm pregnant by the man who owned these things. Look at them and see who's they are. This sea with its cord and this stick. Jida recognized them and said, She's in the right. I have failed in my obligation to her. I should have given her to my son Shela in marriage. And Judah never had intercourse with her again. When the time came for her to give birth, it was discovered that she was going to have twins while she was an inedible one of them put out an arm the midwife caught it tied a red thread round it and said this one was born first 
but he pulled his arm back and his brother was born first. Then uh, the midwife said, so this is how you break your way out. So he was named Perez. Then his brother was born with the red thread on his arm and he was named Zera. This is the end of chapter 38. Let us continue with verse chapter 39. This is about Joseph and Potiphar's wife. Now the Ismaelite had taken Joseph to Egypt and sold him to Potiphar, one of the king's officers, who was the captain of the palace guard. The Lord was with Joseph and made him successful. He lived in the house of, a, of his Egyptian master who saw that the Lord was with Joseph and had made him successful in everything he did. Potiphar was pleased with him and made him his personal servant. So he put him in charge of his house and everything he owned. From then on, because of Joseph, the Lord blessed the household of the of the Egyptian and everything that he had in his house and in his fields. Potiphar handed over everything he had to the care of Joseph and did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Joseph was well built and good looking and after a while his master's wife began to desire Joseph and asked him to go to bed with her. He refused and said to her, Look, my master does not have to concern himself with anything in the house because I'm here. He has put me in charge of everything he has. I have as much authority in this house as he has, and he has not kept back anything from me except you. How then could I do such an immoral thing and sin against God? Although she asked Joseph day after day, he would not go be to bed with her. But one day, when Joseph went into the house to do his work, none of the house servant was there. She caught him by his robe and said, Come to bed with me. But he escaped and ran outside, leaving his robe in her hand. When she was that, she saw that, he had left his robe and uh, had run out of the house. She called to her house servant and said, Look at this. This Hebrew that my husband brought to the house is insulting us. He came into, into my room and tried to rape me, but I screamed as loud as I could. When he heard me scream, 
he ran outside leaving his robe beside me she kept his robe with her until joseph's master came home and then she told him this they say then she told him the same story that hebrew slave that you brought here came into my room and insulted me but when i screamed he ran out leaving his robe beside me joseph's ma- master was furious and had joseph arrested and put in the prison way the king's prisoners were kept and there he stayed but the lord was with him, joseph and blessed him so that he the, j- the jail was pleased with him the j- the jailer was pleased with him he put joseph in charge of all other prisoners and made him responsible for everything that was done in the prison the jailer did not have to look after anything for which joseph was responsible because the lord with, with uh, the lord was with joseph and made him successive succeed in everything he did my brothers and sisters we stop by here today but we can see how people can disgrace others or how people can lie about others so that they can be cast or chased or killed even my brothers and sisters let us avoid to be liars let us be royal to what we say and if the if that the master of joseph was so serious and loved joseph he couldn't even arrest him for a woman maybe if the if it was the love the love of god he could stay patient or forgive that is why when we read the bible we can see how people are how the behavior of people are today you love someone because you have something from him or from her but tomorrow when you don't get something you will love the, you will leave the, the person that the bad attitude you have to avoid my brothers and sisters let us stop by here today and see you later may god bless you in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit amen